Okay, we're going to start now modeling the plane. Uh, let's go to the website. Because uh, I put there the... So we're going to uh, model this Havoc uh, World War plane, which I think is correct. Pointing to the historian that can't see me. <laughs> uh, down, I, I put these uh, files here. This is uh, already prepared. So let's just download them. Before that, let's, I don't know if you have a project for this uh, thing set up. The ones that don't, let's set up a quick project. I will just check my computer because I'm not sure I have it here. Uh, I do have D, Maya projects. Great. So let's just start first setting up a project, whoever doesn't have it. So file, um, project window, not set project, project window. If I need to slow down or somebody is not doing it and wants me to speed up, even better. Uh, I, I have to click on new. And this goes, uh, my location is already D Maya projects. That's where you should put your projects. And we'll call it Havoc. Well, in my naming, I always use underscores. Um, uh, so Havoc underscore airplane. I will just delete a few of those. You don't have to do it. Scenes, I'm leaving images, source images. I can leave, uh, yeah, but this is OK. Um, scene assembly, I'll delete. This is enough. OK, you can also leave everything. It's just to clean it, uh, and then I do accept. So now, if I would look at my D drive, Maya projects, I have Havoc Airplane. And I have all the thing and a workspace. So once you created a project, let's go back to the website and download all those uh, blueprints. So you see, I already prepared them. They're not accurate, because we're going to shift them now. So maybe you had that problem. With the, did you use this uh, images? Yeah. And they, they didn't match, though. That was on purpose. <laughs> so, OK. We, we, I just turned them around a bit. Yeah, yeah, OK, you move them around. It's a little bit. OK, so if you see, I have one image like this. I will yeah. right click and Shrani Sli Kokot. And I will go now, and this is Lakotu <laughs> Dioslovensko. Uh, Maya project and Havoc Airplane, this is how I named it, and source images. And just Shrani. It's old, yeah. Uh, OK, now we are going to go and load those images uh, as planes. Now, usually, you can have a camera. The, the way we do it, if you look at Create, and I showed this once, you have construction plane and you have free image plane. And you also have a camera plane. We can connect this image to the back of each camera. We are going to do it with a free image plane because we want to move things around. You can do it also with a camera. You can move things around. I just find this uh, the easiest. So let's click here, free image plane. We don't even need to go to the settings. This is all OK. 10, 10. Apply and close. And we get this. It's not a polyplane. We get a plane like this. So we all got this. And then we press Control-A to get to the attributes. And in the attributes, uh, usually if you got landed on this window, just ne go to the next tab to image plane shape. There is uh, image plane one and image plane shape one. Here we have the where the file is connected, image type. You can also do videos, by the way, if you're, let's say you're doing animations. We're going to connect an image. And then I just click on the folder here. And I will take the front, let's say for start. And I see the thing, and I'll do open. Notice this got enlarged. It's, the, it's 10 by 10. It's the right size. So, And then if I will just look to, I'll go into four views, because we're going to need the orthographic. I need to make sure this is on my front view. And I think it is. Side, front. You can see here it says front and side, and this is top. So we put the first image. We all have it? OK. Same process again. Uh, create free image plane. This time, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'm doing it rough first, just on the perspective. The reason why is because I want to see where it rotated here, minus 75. I will make it, I can actually do it 90. Plus or minus doesn't matter. 
and then I will do again the same procedure control A when this is selected and connect the next image which is side open and I see it here as a side view so you need to make sure this is in the right uh, uh, way and I'm moving to the next one if you guys already finished before me I'll be create free image plane I'll fir first connect this one this will be the top and I'm just a bit of a tilt here and I will see where it this is my top view okay so it should come out like this now it is it isn't yet aligned uh, like I said they're not really accurate um, we need to fix them now usually if you would do it with your own images of your face you could do this before in Photoshop uh, I wanted to show that we can also do the, the the adjustments here so the first thing that I need to see is I can also do it by first just let's create a, a cylinder to see that our directions are correct and our alignments are correct so let's just create polygon primitives uh, cylinder I will rotate it like this 90 degrees so I'm rotating on perspective a little bit and I'm pressing here 90 so I know I'm 100% I'm square and then I'll just stretch it out somewhere around here so it's from the the top edge to the back on the side view I'm filling this in and then I can already the reason I put first an object those images by the way we don't have I have them here as completely uh, on the center I can also move them and actually it is better if I move them a little bit back it doesn't really matter it will always be orthnographic so it's in those views it will stay the same wherever I move it this one no not this way sorry so I'm moving it back I'm creating a bit of a box it's not that necessary it's just so I can or move it even uh, down so I can see the plane so if you look at my perspective I have a kind of box like this so I can see my model and see the images all the time this is just out of comfort I can always also we will do a display layer so we can hide them now the reason I did this uh, first the cylinder let's press 4 if we look at the four views our cylinder here is aligned let's say okay with this plane but here we already see this image is wrong it's we need to rotate it so I will select it press E for rotate or and then I will just rotate it here again I do it just uh, a bit rough to see the number and then just correct it here I think with shift it'll also snap see this one now if I go to my top view press 4 yeah we're pretty okay now my plane as you see is not centered uh, it's offset let's say if I look my cylinder should be perfectly in the center this image plane is not centered so let's just move this uh, select it again with W for translate let's move this image and we see that the middle line which is this one in the image should be on the middle of the grid around there now this image is not perfect you see the line is not straight all the time we should actually rotate it a bit less but this is good enough for our shape so move it a bit to the left so it's centered I don't see anything anymore okay so yeah this is my center line and the same I would do here this one also I know is offset I'm pressing forward to see through the wireframe and again this is my center I need to move this image here so the center of the plane is the center of the thing the way I work usually is very um, uh, I rough it up first and then start getting into more details and we'll do it um, one more thing if I look at my base my bottom of it now my cylinder is not exactly I'll just move it a little bit up here so it touches the bottom of the plane if you see here 
and I will just check it's pretty okay with this one although you see there is a difference so I should probably if this if I, I set this is to be my uh, bottom then I should also lift this up here a little bit to be the bottom here and for now I guess this is precise enough with these images this image is not perfect I, I already see it's not aligned uh, perfectly okay so far so good let's do file save scene as and it see it takes me directly into my project and scenes so and I'm gonna call this um, havoc underscore a question mark Slovene keyboard MDL um, I will add the whip work in progress zero zero one just so I know that uh, I can save stages one more thing when we have the file save scene and I open the settings sorry file save scene not as but file save scene and settings I have here this option incremental save I showed this before or no Ah, okay so th this is also important this is a basically uh, if I will click this this means that it will create every time I press save it will make a folder and save that uh, keep me a backup of that stage so I can actually always call this uh, file uh, uh, plain model it stays plain model every time I press save in another folder it will be saved each version that I do so it's a way of backing up your work in case you got into troubles you did and you lost some of your uh, so it's it's like it's not auto save it's just every time you press save it will give you a uh, um, incremental this takes a lot of space it fills up the space in the computer like crazy but what I do usually is I always have it on and from time to time uh, let's do save scene and see the results no save change uh, well let's just I'll just do a little bit of a change and then do file save scene just to show what this does if I go to my Maya projects and my scene folder now I have a new folder called incremental save I have here the the scene that I'm working on and here I will have every scene name there'll be a folder and it will start numbering uh, each save that I do as, as, uh, as a different uh, file the good thing that what you sh I think this is very good to always have on just from time to time go in there and delete them let's say you you pass the stages you're you're happy you can or uh, you can also use RAR because those files when you compress them they become very small so you can actually RAR it and then it'll be 10 gigabytes uh, you're seeing uh, incremental it'll become 200 mega so just something to pay attention to but if you use the incremental save watch out for your disk space it's every save is a scene okay so this is uh, at this point okay cool now I will just go again to my side view B because we just created the cylinder I will start adding I can still I didn't delete history so I can still add divisions here what I will do is the caps where I have uh, the caps are here just a second let's see it in perspective you see my caps are all going into one line if I will change this to zero just to keep it simple it's one face it's broken we will delete this later uh, uh, the divisions around the height because I want them to be even let's start with eight so we have eight divisions again we will add more and more at, at the time don't press three because you're going to smooth mode um, stay on uh, one on uh, preview oh. eight yeah. okay this process of modeling is very straightforward and it's actually your face modeling anything you will want to model with three images you start uh, like this so now let's just another thing I'm going to do before we, we do this I'm going to create a new display layer layer create empty layer and I'll call this I double click the layer here and I'll call this image planes I'll give it some groovy color and I will now select all these image planes one two three right click on this layer add selected objects to check that it worked I will just untick the V here and they should disappear so I can have a way to 
dis dis uh, make them disappear. The reason I'm doing it is that in the course of the work, you might move your plane. It might because we did a free image plane not connected to a camera, so we are able to change it, and then your modeling will go wrong. I will now click here, template, another time, reference. That means I cannot select them. They're there. I cannot uh, touch them. Uh, just handy so you don't by mistake move your images uh, as you go. Okay, now we're going to go with this view and you see my lines, my edges. We don't need the slide tool actually because nothing of this shape will work. I will just start positioning them a bit more uh, where my line is. So this one I will move to this edge, to this line. This one I will move forward. I'm, I, my way is doing it very rough first and then starting to uh, uh, add more loops or uh, more details. So I would just first go through side view, then uh, let's just do the side view first. And I move this one to this line, approx. I'm doing it quite quick. I'll move this one to the edge where the wind shield goes up here, if you see in the image. Oh. This line to here. And I would move. This one I can leave at the same spot. The back, let's now go from the back to see oh, my middle mouse. This is fine, let's say. This one I would just move a little bit to be on this line. Fine. Okay, so let's just move this one to the back of this gun here. And this one I would move to very close to it where the uh, edge goes down. If you see it here, I have this uh, oh, piece more. Um, I have this uh, arch here for the gun. The plane goes uh, down. So it's not. We, we will add more uh, later. Once I position them roughly as I want them, and I will add more divisions. I will just take this front one. Use my scale tool, and I have to select all of them and always on one direction at all. I'll just squeeze this in a bit somewhere around there, not all the way to the tip. We will probably do the tip anyways in a separate. Um, yeah, but let's do it like that for now. I'll move to the next line and squeeze this in a bit. Now notice when I push this in, this button is, uh, I need to move it also. This is now higher and this is already missing. So I have to uh, scale it down plus move it a little bit. I want the, the, the high point here and the low point there. You can scale it a little bit. And the beginning, you can do it quite rough. The, oh. You see, this is too much, so it's, it's kind of a little bit, bit of a balance of it. Yeah. This one starts OK and up to here, maybe a little bit smaller. OK. This is, I would need another edge loop here and another here, but for now we're just starting with really a few of them. This one will be scaled up a little bit wider. The reason why I'm starting with very few uh, is because I will do all the sides and then add more. This one seems to be okay, maybe a little bit. And down, and this one is because it's already a close one, I need to scale it down. Take your time with this. I'm going to just run through it. Now, it's different people. If you want to work very precise, although I would recommend to not work yet precise, because we will do all the sides and then change things again. So I'm putting this one. The next one I already see needs a lot more shrinking. So sometimes you need to shrink it and scale it down, I mean, and then move it also. Now here, I don't really see where the top is, but I would imagine, because this is a, a piece that's stuck on it, I would imagine that it goes straight. And there is a bit of a do dashed line here to show me. So this one has to be scaled further. I'm not worried, I'm gonna repeat this many times, so it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, this one down and moving upwards. Just to get the general feel of it. 
if I would look from the perspective view, kind of what I got, still nothing. I'm moving now to the front view. Again, right-click vertices. Now notice my I have here a much more sphere, and this is going quite straight um, out. The thing is, maybe to make our life easier, we don't want to. We don't need to work on both sides at the same time. We can actually delete one side. So let's just worry about this side. So I'll just take row by row like I did before and try to scale them into position. So I will move this a little bit inwards to be in line with the glass. Now this is the edge, this is something, this is the back of the plane. So this is my line, the black line that I'm going in here, this is the line that I would want to trace. I will scale this a little bit. Uh, what I can do is also grab all of those because I see that I have to squeeze a lot. I will just grab all of those together this whole half side, not from the middle, and just scale it this way to give me a bit of an easier, a faster way to do this. So you, you see I'm now scaling all of them together from one side. I'm not worried about this side. Don't worry about this side. We're going to delete it in two seconds. So, so now we're just having a little problem. Yeah. Face mode. No. And select all the faces up to the middle on the other side. Now you see it also selected me this caps. I don't care. Yeah. And just press delete just to make sure first I will look at the where we're modeling to see that nothing else is selected. Looks fine. And I'll press delete. So actually we're gonna work only on half of the model. Remember the mirror tool, because at the end we're just gonna mirror it. There's no point for us to work on so I'm going back to my front view, your case side view, Z zooming in, and I'll go back to vertex mode. So in vertex mode, this one, I aligned it OK, top to bottom. I'm going to the next row, and I'm really looking at it as rows. It's easier for me maybe to think about it this way. Scale up and move down. F8 is also a good way to move between the, f the modes, uh, however you see. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the top view, the same procedure. And I'm just the thing to be very careful with is, let's say in the edges, you see it goes to a point, so I'm not going to scale it all the way down, just a little bit to get the general shape, and I'll push this back. So I started from the back of the plane. With your case, when you flip the, um, the images, just check that your back and front are really in the right uh, way. And the way you do that is, <coughs> sorry, if you go to your uh, or through a si uh, side view, and this is, I know for sure, this is the back of my plane, because I have it selected. Here I see this is selected behind, which is good. And here in the top view, I definitely see it's the back. So just make sure you don't have it flipped. Because I don't want to lose the, the line here that I already have, and it's a straight line. I can always align it later, but I can just select everything except the first point, because I don't want to change that. So all these three, or what, how many they are, and push this in and move it back. Now on the edge, at the end, I won't go to a fixed point. I will just stay around. So here I'm selecting everything except the, this point. You see it may be closer. The, the point that's straight and aligned, I'm happy with, so I don't want to move it. I will just select all those, squeeze it first a bit, and move it. Now here I don't see in the drawing the alignment, but I already see the line where it continues here, so I can just imagine where this line goes. That's why I say rough to get the general shape, because afterwards we'll get more into uh, these details. I go to the next row, same, I squeeze it a bit, and move it in. The wings, if you can see, I will go with the body of the plane, and there's this dotted line, I think, marking for me the, the body. So this is fine the way it is. In my case, I think also here is fine for the start. Uh, this one needs to be a bit bigger. So a little bit bigger, and I'll move it out a, a little bit. The same goes here. and out a little bit. 
and these ones are. Now already you notice my picture, you see how the nose is not aligned correctly? It's a, uh, this picture is tilted, it's drawn this way, I will just imagine it. When you will model things very precise, you will need to have this images a lot better. This is just something taken from the web. And this could be some Photoshop work. Okay. This is what we got. Nothing yet to get too excited about. Or, yeah. Okay. Now you see we have a, a bit of a problem. How do we close this tops? The, the, the edges here. Now I can do it in a few ways. We leave them for now. You know what? Let's do it like that. Let's go to our side view. And I will actually, you see here if my side view, because I don't have enough points, this is a straight line. It should actually be more defined here. Uh, what I would start doing now first is on the side view to insert edge loops. So I'll go to my mesh tools. Uh, insert edge loop and I will just add one here where I see this line to give it a bit more detail once I added this one I will go into my vertices and scale it a bit to get this arch okay something around there and I will add another edge loop here with this point, where I see that this is just picking up straight. I will insert another edge loop. So mesh tools, insert edge loop. I will slow it down here. And let's say this is OK. Now you see, for me to get this shape, which is a bit of an arch, will be I could do it. I could just move things back and start getting this shape around. But I can also do something else. Because also, the reason why I would do something else is because if you notice this, uh, to close this front with the right topology will be a bit annoying to, to do like this. I will have to uh, build it. So what I'm going to do now is delete, actually. I'll go into faces. I'm deleting this whole front faces. So far, so good. So what? Yeah. Now, we can do it in lots of ways. We could do it by just moving it around. I want to have a good uh, topology. I will either start with, let's see how we do that. We can do it actually with a sphere and just stitch it in there. Or, because we like the, how the topology was built with, um, with a cube that was subdivided, I will create, uh, create a polygon cube. Let's look at it in perspective first. Here it is. In my modeling toolkit, I have this smooth here what we did last time and I will do divisions two let's say for now two is enough I think or, yeah we want to keep it low only. yeah two is enough okay so I have a kind of sphere uh, already built with a right topology A cube, but I subdivided. I could have done a sphere and then I would just have a, a point at the end. The reason I'm doing it because I want to have this clear uh, topology at the end. Yeah, quads. I could do it and then make quads. It's, it's all pretty much the same. I would just move it a little bit out. Since I know I don't need half of the sphere from this edge, I will delete this half from here. I also know that from the front I don't need half of it. I will delete half here. And we are left with what I need. <laughs> okay, I will slow it a bit down. And I'm just positioning it roughly where it should be. We're good. Somebody has a problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Now I'm not caring that it exactly yet fits this shape. I'm more caring that these lines and these lines are connecting. And then I will look through perspective. Okay. 
And we need to see we have the same amount of division. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, we have too many. Mm -hmm. Let's just, for the sake of it, let's do it the rough way, and then we'll discover what we need to get rid of. So let's select both of those objects, and then we combine them so we can start stitching them. Once we did the combine, I will use now this target weld tool, and I will start from the top. I should have aligned it better, but let's I'll, I'll snap to this uh, guys just this edge, and then I'll align the rest. So I started with this one to this point. From the circle, I'm snapping to the body. Uh, this one to here. This one to up. Sometimes you will need to go into this mode in order to see where it's going. I like to toggle back and forth from it. So we're basically slowly stitching those two pieces together. If ah, oh, it's driving me insane. Uh, sorry. If you don't see, you, you go into wireframe and then you do it this way. Now we have the wrong amount of divisions, and I know it already. Ah. So these two edges I don't really need. You see, I have a problem here. I have two edges that are, I will actually stitch this one to here, and these two on the bottom, I will select edge, double click it, double click this one, and if we remember, edit mesh, delete edge vertex. I simplified the base of the plane uh, for this. If I counted uh, first the numbers correctly, I would get this. Now, another problem I had, I will just also move now things manually by eye just to get a more correct shape before I even look. That's why I said we're roughing up the shape. And if you look at the, I will look at it through top view, you'll see it better. Because I didn't align things correctly in the beginning, I have this whole top rows not not in line with the middle of the grid. So I would just, with X, remember, snap it to grid. I'm going to now, because I, you see I have a bit of a ball here, and it's a, the nose, because it was a sphere before. So I'm going to just select them manually and push them in. I will just select all those ones that are a bit sticking out. And with the scale tool, I'll flatten them out a bit and move them inside. Just somewhere around there. So what you should get at the end is something like this. It's not yet exact, but it's it's combined. It's one model. We're OK. Just remember, from time to time, when you're done with a certain stage, edit, delete all by type history. So we clean the scene, and Control S. And I'll go around with how this nose goes. Now, the back of the plane, we don't need to do this because this will probably be a hole for, yeah. If you look at the back of the plane, this would probably be a hole, actually, for the exhaust of the plane or whatever. But I'm just now going around a little bit by eye because I see that this is completely wrong. Uh, I see the, the thing, and I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. Now, if you have another thing, you see, I have my move tool. I cannot select other points. Really difficult for me, except that the mouse is moving around. If I press Q, I'm just in select mode, so I can select the next point. Shift. 
And I'm doing this just because I want to just a little bit lift this up. So I get a more uh, curvy line here, somewhere around there. Now you see my distribution of the edges are now uh, much not even because I deleted an edge from here. And what I will do is now with the edge, double click it. And remember the edge slide tool, uh, mesh tools, uh, slide edge. Okay. And with the middle mouse, I will move it a little bit up. Nothing too important, just to get this a bit more evened out spread. Uh, as, uh, another way to select, we used only this select tool with this marquee select square, which is, let's say in this case would be hard for me because I have all these uh, vertices just popping all about. What I could do is also I have this select tool. This marquee select just allows me to uh, grab things in not a straight manner, which will add. <coughs> the reason I'm doing this is because my new edges that we put weren't fitting so much to here. The, those of you, uh, let's say because you have it already uh, uh, added here, then what you need to do if you finish is to start adding, go through the side view and let's start aligning to the shape and then adding more edge loops. Let's say here in the window I see already that this is broken. I will need to edit mesh, uh, insert edge loops, sorry, mesh tools. Wouldn't it be nice if I could have put it all inside a shelf? And I can. So again, I will just show that for those who I will go with. I don't have my shelf here. Okay. New shelf. Okay, I made a new shelf. This is for me. If to those of you want to uh, make your uh, tools, because we're using the same tools all the time, so Control Shift and click on the object. It puts it in your shelf. Don't have to. I'm pointing it to you. So let's say if you had it uh, done, start adding more edge loops and getting this more fine-tuned. Next, we will need to start a lot looking at the images as we go. You see the wing has here a, a patch here. These are the flaps that I was talking about. Let's find a better picture for this. Uh, we will need more pictures in order to do it. I tried to put the... See, there is a, uh, a vent here, because we don't really have how it's connected, the side view. You'll see it's very hard to see from this uh, chloris. You see it's the same as this. this. is made from pieces. We can also, we, if we don't want to animate it, we don't need this. We can just do it as one piece. Uh, we can separate. But we can also start at one piece, then separate it. So it's just things to pay attention. But the chloris, these blueprints, are not going to help us that much. We'll need to start looking a lot at images. Uh, into getting and I selected a few images is actually a built model a physical one just to certain details we can see here the front the engines also how they're connected and also you can see here how the wings are curved now I had a bit of a problem with the uh, uh, with the wings uh, in a sense if we look at Maya from our side view I don't really get how the wings are shaped I don't get the 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 wings have this kind of for the lift. They have a, an arch. So this I would look for another reference. Uh, or I think in general, just the wings have a, um, if you look in Google, because I'm saying if you'll continue this at home, you'll run into this problem. I can look from this image, but I can also look at uh, plain wing side view, I think, which should help us. Yeah, you see, so you have here. Uh, kind of the outlines of different wings. Now we don't have, I guess it's the albatross. We just need to get this, uh, here it goes to a point. There is a reason for this, because of lift. If anybody um, you know, knows a bit about aeronautics, the, here it's a longer distance than here, and that's what keeps it, or the opposite, I'm not sure. So I could just roughen this shape up now from, uh, from the side view. Now, one way to do it, just another tool, and we did it last time. I can move, again, all uh, pixels one by, by another, but I could also create deformers. Lattice, I like this way. Gives me uh, more controls. 
So I'm giving, you remember the lattice tool? Yeah. Kind of. Uh, deform, deform lattice. Now it just gives me less controls to control the whole object. If I will go into perspective and we see our lattice, I actually need, uh, I don't need five divisions here. I can always look. I need, I, in the shapes here, when I created the lattice, I can add the divisions. Also here I don't need them. Here I would need them. And the reason is I can take this lattice point and just take this one and this one and start just roughing it out. I mean, I could do it ha how we did it right now, yeah? Um, I could do it one by one, but I think that this will go a bit easier. Now, I would just look again in my Google just to get this. Uh, I think it's somewhere like this. And the bottom one has a bit. You don't have to use the lattice tool. I just, you know, if it helps, then it's... Uh, Okay, so we're going to continue with our plane modeling. Uh, this time I will just finish the body and the wing. To show it, one important uh, note is to work between 1 and 3, smooth preview. The smooth will be our uh, aim for the high poly model, and the level 1 will be our low poly model for the engine. Okay.